back again, back again for another episode of a Muslim and an atheist breaks bread. What are you saying, Pops? I'm good, man. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay, so we talk about obviously God and the prophets a lot. To be fair, I don't think anyone ever talks about Noah. It's always, you know, Moses, Jesus, and that. Uh, Muhammad, isn't it? really, they're the three prophets you're gonna hear about. So I wanted to just see what the Quran says about Noah, if it's any different to the Bible. Do you know any insight on this? Essentially, the same story. Is it okay? Essentially. All right. Well, let's take a look. time passed, they had certain pious people from amongst them. If you look at Surah Nuh, you will find the names of these pious people. Waddan, Suwa'an, Yaghuth, Ya'uq, and Nasr. These are five names mentioned in the Quran. They were pious people. Shaitan came to the, the people of that time and said, look, these are pious people who are reminding you to do good. Now that they've died, just make a small statue. So every time you see the statue, you'll be able to remember that this person used to remind us of good and you will do the good. They saw nothing wrong in that. They created statues and each one was named after one of these pious people. And every time they came and they saw these statues, they were very happy. It reminded them to do good and they began to do good. Now Shaitan is very patient. So he waited for that generation to pass. When that generation passed. That's amazing that isn't it? The head Rock. carved into the... Rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where is that? Do you know? No. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, you see that then, right where I think he's going with this. So the devil's gone, oh yeah, they're all good people. Make statues. He's trying to get them to worship fake idols. Mm. I think it's how it was introduced to mankind. Oh, what, the idols? Yeah, this is how the devil got man to start worshipping. Yeah, the gods. And people forgot why exactly they had made those statues. He went to the next generation and said, you know, your forefathers, you don't know what they used to do. They used to worship these idols. These are statues. This is what brought them goodness. And he conned them. He said, whenever they saw these idols, they worshipped the idols, so they became good people and goodness came in their direction. So Shaitan says, don't you see the statue used to help them to become good. So you need to prostrate to these statues in order to become even better. So this is when shirk started. This is the first association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's how the shirk start to spread among the people after the death of Idris all the way to Nuh alayhi salam. And the shirk took over the world. That there was no one saying La ilaha illallah except Nuh. Shirk, the devil. Idol worship. Oh, so shirk is idol worship. Okay, okay. the time of Nuh alayhi salam, Nuh was the only Muslim worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal alone at that time. Everyone beside Nuh is a mushrik. Everyone beside Nuh associates someone else with Allah Azza wa Jal. And then Nuh alayhi salam came. We sent Nuh to his people. So he said to them directly, O oh my people, Worship Allah alone. You have no deity besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Calling towards the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 950 years, generations, generations 
were coming into and leaving Nuh salam's time. Such a long time actually for da'wah. Now obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives this struggle to the prophets because the prophets can handle it. 950 years calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or people say La ilaha illallah. We sent Nuh to his people. So Noah's 950. Noah lived for a long time. Is that in the Bible as well? Was he? Yeah, the people of old in the Bible lived. A couple hundred years? No, long time. 900. Mm. His people to warn his tribe and people before a severe punishment comes to them. I fear over you. The punishment of that day, the great day. I am only conveying to you the messages of my own Rabb and I am giving you advice, nasiha, sound advice I am delivering to you. So don't hold it against me. Don't call me a madman. Weigh what I am saying and if it makes sense and it will definitely make sense if you are ready to ponder over it, then follow it. So a few people started following him. Who? Very few. After so many years, one person. After so many years, another person. Subhanallah. What were their backgrounds? What were their positions and status in the community or in society? You will find that every single one of them, Allah describes them in the Quran, that they were people who weren't very important in the society. What do I mean by that? They weren't popular people. They weren't famous people. They weren't people who had high positions, such as the chief of a, of a tribe or the leader of a, of, a, of a nation or a doctor, a PhD or a famous singer or a famous actor. They were merely farmers, simple people. They would call them primitive people. And when they heard the da'wah of Nuh salam, they did not hesitate to accept. They did not hesitate to accept. So when Nuh salam began to give da'wah to the others who were the chiefs and the big men and the big people and the hotshots and all that, you know, what happened? They did not want to listen. They wanted to carry on in their ways. The chiefs from amongst the people, those who had authority, those who had power, those who had wealth, those who had respect in society, they spoke. They said, you are astray. This man is astray. Don't listen to him. Nuh said, Qala Rabbi, oh my Lord, Oh my Lord, I called my people during the day and night. And my call to them only made them run away from me. And yet he was a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They followed the haughty. They followed those who had money. They followed those who had authority. They put their fingers in their ears. They don't want to listen to me. They don't want to hear what I'm calling them for. They covered themselves and get away. We don't want to listen to you. And they are very firm in denying. And they had pride. Oh Allah, then I called them in the open. I called them in the open. I called them in clothes. I called them in the day. I called them at night. I went to their houses. I went to their gatherings. I spoke to them individually. I spoke to them in groups. And they only ran away from me. 950 years, ya khwani. 950 years. They replied to him, We will not believe in you. You're a madman. You're a crazy man. And anyway, look at who has followed you. This is in the Quran. We cannot see anyone has followed you except the, the most inferior among us in society. They just take very simple words without thinking about it. No logical, no logic to them. They just... Anything you say to them, they believe it. Ah, oh. what they're trying to say is a type that believe in fairies, in fairy tales. Put a tooth under your pillow, the next morning you'll find a coin. They were trying to say this is the type of people they were, like children. This is how they saw them. But contrary to that, opposite to that, Allah saw them quite the opposite. He saw those ones inferior and these ones superior. Why? When the truth comes, brothers and sisters, the truth has a description. How do you know the truth from false? The truth is clear. Number one, the truth is very clear. 
The truth is powerful. It, can, it takes you five minutes or less to accept the truth. So these people whom they called inferior, badia ra'i, primitive minded like... That's a bit of a, uh, a rigid line. It takes you five minutes or less. Surely some people bow with truths their whole lives. Some people might believe or not believe and bow with that for years. So to say it only takes five minutes, that don't make no sense. Well, he says it's clear. So if it's clear, it must make it easy. And it, um, yeah, it's a bit of a wide sweeping statement, but no, watch that. <laughs> Like children, they were deliberately calling him that out of arrogance and proudiness. Why? These people, they didn't want the truth because the truth will make them equal to the farmers and to all the others. When I mean farmers, today farmers are important, but in those days when he said farmer, it means he's just primitive, doesn't have any education. And look at those who are following you, look at them, they are the worst from amongst us. They've got no material standing at all. Nobody respects them in society. They are foolish. They haven't even thought before they followed you. They don't even know what's about to come in their direction. 950s. 950s. That's not how long he lived for. He called to Allah for 950 years. They said to him, if you get rid of these inferior people who are primitive minded, we'll think of following you. We'll think. So what are these people actually asking you? They're not after the truth. We'll speak to you. In return, you keep those weak ones away from us. We do not accept them to be around us. I'm not going to turn these people out. I'm not going to tell them, go away. They will be facing Allah too. And they'll be judged like you too. All my people, who will support me? Who will stand by me? If I kick these people away and Allah Azza wa Jal will want to punish me, who will stand by me? Who will support me against Allah if I turn these people away? Who's going to stand by me? These are Allah's servants. These people have rights to listen. If I kick them out, who's going to stand by me in front of Allah Azza wa Jal? Who's going to protect me from Allah's punishment? Abulat of the Kuru country, think. So they did not listen to him. So that if that's the case, we wanted to give you some respect, but you didn't listen to us. Then go. He dwelled within them, calling them towards goodness for a thousand years, less 50, which means 950 years. He spoke to them, he called them. He instructed them, he tried with them. He answered all their questions. Now they started getting frustrated. Now they wanted to begin to threaten. They say, oh no, keep quiet. If you're not going to keep quiet, we're going to stone you to death. If you don't keep quiet, we're going to stone you. Allahu Akbar. What did Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam do? He kept on saying, Ya Allah, guide my people. Ya Allah, guide my people. Ya Allah, guide these people. He kept on saying it. He was patient. He was patient for a long, long time. Waqalu majnoonun. And they called him mad. Was dujir. And they rebuked him. They swore him. They mocked at him. They tortured him. They engaged in all forms of evil, but he was still saying, Oh Allah, guide my people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said to Nuh alayhi salam, أَنَّهُ لَنْ يُؤْمِنَ مِنْ قَوْمِكَ إِلَّا مَنْ آمَنْ No more of your people shall believe in you other than those who have already believed. So grieve no longer at their misdeeds. Don't, don't feel sorry for them. What does this mean? Allah told him, no one is going to believe anymore. That's it. That's it. The Hidayah is closed on these people. Subhanallah. Revelation from Allah saying to Noah, don't waste your time anymore. Whoever you're going to call, whoever you're going to speak to, whoever you're going to preach to, no one is going to listen to you anymore. So Nuh alayhi salam, although he was so patient for many, many years, many, many years, 950 years, do you know what happened? Finally, he raised his hands. So then he made his famous dua. Oh my Lord, do not leave 
a single disbeliever on the face of the earth again. Don't leave them alive. If you leave them alive on the face of the earth, 